This video is intended to show you how to use ImageTrend for doing NIFRS reporting. So let's jump right in and we are going to be at the uh, sign in screen so you can go ahead and sign in. Once you sign in you get this uh, agreement screen. Click yes and it takes you on to the uh, opening screen where there's announcements. Currently these are canned announcements that come from ImageTrend. At some point, hopefully in the near future, we'll be able to uh, add our own announcements here uh, and control this page, so do keep an eye on this. Once you're logged in uh, for the first time, um, or if you haven't done this before, I uh, suggest going to your name up in the upper right, click on account, and uh, here you'll see um, various tabs. The first one is demographics and here is some information that you can edit yourself. The other ones you need to go through um, us here at headquarters to have those things changed. Uh, so I encourage you to look at this and make sure everything is correct. Uh, phone numbers and email addresses when you um, enter your information, make sure you hit the Save button. However, uh, we found this out the hard way. Uh, when you're adding phone numbers and email addresses, you click that little button there and start adding it. You don't just go up and hit Save. Before you hit Save, you actually need to hit the little checkbox, which saves it to this, and then you go up and hit Save, and then you're good to go. So. Um, Let's go back to the uh, beginning screen here. For most people, you're going to be going in here and just going straight to your fire incidents. Incidents are under this tab, under this menu item. And there's a lot of stuff here that I have that I'm in here as an admin. You're not going to see all of this. But you want to go to uh, View Existing Fire. And it's going to bring you to the fire incident list several things to note here before we get started. One is the search columns. Uh, you can search here for pretty much anything that's down here within an incident. Um, if you want to search for the incident number you can do that. Note the drop down here and these words mean things. So contains means it's somewhere in that search stream starts with means just this that. So if I put the last four or five numbers of the incident in here, it's not going to find it with a starts with. It would need to be a contains. So either way you go, just make sure you're noting what's over here to the left. The other thing to note is when you are searching, keep in mind your date range. The date range by default is two weeks so if what you're searching for is outside of the date range, you need to adjust your date range. Uh, so if the incident I'm, I'm looking for was on February 14th, and I put in the correct information here, it still won't show up until I correct my date range. You can just hit the X here, clear out the date criteria altogether, and it'll give you all the incidents that are in image trend, which as you can see is a lot. You could also filter by uh, apparatus. So if I want to look for Ambulance 8, uh, so this would be all incidents that Apparatus 8 has been on. Um, this will filter out everything else and only show me incidents with Apparatus 8. Makes it a little easier to find your your incident. Um, order by obviously is uh, you can order by whatever you want to and in what direction. So with that, uh, oh one other thing, the views. Uh, the views are uh, kind of important. You may by default have this one, fire incident list. I suggest going and changing your view to the agency view incidents. It's uh, one we created um, 
for us, and it's a little bit better, I think, um, than the default one. So if you get in here and your default view is not this, go ahead and make it that. I definitely think you, you'll find your information a lot better. So let's go ahead and start looking for uh, an incident. I created one uh, for testing purposes. And hopefully I can find it here. I need to clear out that. And there it is. So here's my incident that I want to go in and edit. Uh, several things you'll note here right off the bat is the validity. This is something we really want to keep an eye on because we want our validity to be 100. That's the goal. So I'm going to come over here and just hit the uh, arrow to the right, which takes me right into the report. You start off with the uh, in the basic details section. Um, so let's note a few things about this screen before we move on. Um, over here you have different sections and within the sections you have different panels. So I can change my panel or I can change my section and it takes me into different areas. You'll also note the red and the red indicates that there is an area that has a field that's required or fields that are required. And required fields once completed raise your score. So when you see red you want to go into that section and or panel and find the information that you need to fill out and fill it out correctly. Um, also you'll note that when you change some information in here it may light up another panel so if I change this incident number from the 322 to a, a 111 these just lit up so because it's a building fire I have a lot more questions that I have to be uh, have to answer so we'll go through that in just a little bit <clears throat> the other thing to notice here is um, the menu you can come up here and there's different things you can add. Um, if you um, need to add an addendum, you can do that here. If you want to put in an attachment, you can do that here. If you are an officer who needs who has unlocking privileges, this is where you would unlock it. Also, if you're an officer who has deleting privileges, this is where you would delete it. Also, note your status. Once you're complete, um, with your report and you have a hundred on your validation please do mark your status as finalized and over here is apparatus uh, which is an additional way to get into basically the same screen um, or the same area and and we'll go through this in just a minute all right so here at the details section we need to select some information and it's just as simple as I find this red here and I know I need to uh, make a selection and so once I do the red goes away my score goes up um, so you can go through here like this uh, just searching through it you could actually even um, type in some information if you know exactly what you're looking for uh, I put in fire it's gonna filter out everything that doesn't have the word fire in it and um, but I can also click this button right here which changes the tab or the uh, panel over to the left it makes it a little easier to find the information you're looking for you also have your search uh, there as well. So you'll also notice the minus and what this is is called a pertinent negative. Sometimes you're, there's going to be something that's undetermined or some other uh, not applicable kind of uh, an answer. If that exists 
and it is correct, then you can add that if there's no, if, if it currently does not have a, either a pertinent negative or the option it gives you when you click this is not what you're looking for, uh, it's because it's a NIFRS required field and the values there are only values that NIFRS will accept. So it's not something that we can edit. Um, you'll need to work through it. And if you don't know the answer, obviously we need to ask somebody that does. So I'm in the details section. You'll notice my, deep, my red over here has changed to blue. I can move over to times. Um, the times should be coming in from CAD automatically. The CAD interface automatically brings over the incident number, the incident type, the times, and the apparatus. We are working on adding uh, shift and fire area to the um, automatic uh, interface. Those last two are still in the works, uh, but once they do come over, they will populate automatically. Uh, the times, though, do populate automatically, but occasionally the times get a little um, little screwed up, so keep an eye on those. And if you are having an issue with your times, always refer back to WebCAD. You can open up the incident in WebCAD and correct the times in image trend from the times that appear in WebCAD. Um, if you put in a time that doesn't match up, in other words, uh, it, it cannot possibly be that the time you put in uh, would be correct given say the alarm date time it's going to it's going to give you a red you can click on the exclamation point and it will give you a message uh, and here it tells you that exceeded that so if I come over here and um, change my uh, my date um, to um, the 28th and now my time needs to be greater than that so as you can see that it's automatically calculating the the times uh, that that are there I need to add one more hour there we go so keep an eye on your times um, and then, and that, seeing how it accepted that, the uh, red went away. So, and our score has gone up. We can go over to property, um, find what is applicable. Property losses. Um, property losses obviously is very important. Um, please put in the correct value as best you can determine. Uh, even though it's red and you could get away with putting just whatever in there, please put in as accurately as you can the value that uh, that loss is. Um, so moving on, um, we have um, more things here. So you can see all the red that we have here. All this stuff has to be filled out. If you're wanting to get to it a little quicker, you can come down here to validation and it brings you to um, a different view of those things that are uh, required and you can click it and it takes you right to it. Makes it a little easier than just going through these tabbing through. However, um, there may be some more information that you want to fill out that is not required. Um, some things that might include that will be um, party responsible for report. Right now, that's not a required field, although we may make it required at some point. But this can help you if you're on a call and you know that uh, company one is the one responsible for doing this report. Doing, uh, completing this box will help reports be generated that show um, that it's uh, company one that's responsible for this or you know whomever and not you if you were on that call. Um, so it'll get it off your list and onto the appropriate list. 
All right, so once you're, you've done as much as you can, say, for now, and you need to close it out, you can close it out and always come back to it. Um, and once you do close it out, it, um, it stays unlocked. And you can go back to your list and do another report. But um, obviously, if you need to go back into it, you can go right back into it. All right, let's go over to apparatus real quick and note that it's automatically going to bring in the apparatus that CAD sent over. However, if personnel were not added to the roster, no personnel will appear on that apparatus for this incident. However, you can come in here and, and add uh, personnel manually. You can um, you can um, search for them, add them, and and uh, move on. So it's uh, pretty straightforward. We'll get into um, the roster stuff in a little bit, but um, if your um, if your apparatus is on here without personnel, please add your personnel. Um, it may be that you need to add a person. For some reason, um, uh, apparatus didn't get, didn't come over from CAD. I mentioned before, times sometimes, very rarely, but occasionally the times get a little messed up. So if you need to add a new apparatus, um, you can do that. Um, you can do that here. Uh, And, uh, and then, of course, go in and uh, edit the personnel for that apparatus. Okay, the other thing to note here is um, under edit apparatus is apparatus actions. To some extent, this takes care of um, what you might otherwise be doing in a summary report. Um, an addendum, but if you can add what your apparatus did uh, on here through this, this helps the NIPRS reporting rather than just typing it out in a summary. However, if you need to add a summary under basic and summary is where you would add your narratives. Um, the primary narrative and then a potentially additional narratives. When you're doing your narratives, please include who is writing this narrative, either at the top or bottom, but somewhere in there indicate the author of the narrative because it will not indicate that based on your login. So whether you're doing the primary or additional, please do include uh, your name. All right, so we'll go through here and add a few things. Um, my goal being to not just put in the right, uh, not just to get uh, validation score up, but to also, as I mentioned before, put in as accurate of information information as possible. Um, obviously I'm just selecting some stuff here that will make no sense at all, but uh, note the, note the um, validation score as I click these things. And we're getting pretty close to being completed. My times are uh, coming back.
didn't like that one. Um, so sometimes the answer isn't correct and the system's smart enough to know. So here we will say, um, didn't like that one either. Enclosed building. And when I note, when I selected that, these lit up. Um, So now I have a 100, which is great. So I can save it. It actually automatically saves, but it makes you feel better. Click that. So now I can change my status to finalized. And I can close. And again, it automatically does. So if you didn't hit the save button, hitting close will save it. That brings us back here. I'm going to search for this incident again. And here we go. And we can see we have a validity of 100. Shows me who it was modified by and the status is finalized. This is what we want to get to. A lot of the reports that we're running are showing those reports, those incidents with a validity of less than 100. So once you get 100, you're off of a list, which is pretty good. Nobody's going to be bugging you. Um, so that's our goal is to get to a, a validity of 100. Um, the status is not locked, so I could still go back in here. I could have locked it. Uh, if after 72 hours you haven't done anything with this report, it will automatically lock. If that is the case, when you try to go back into a report that it is locked, you can contact any of the shift officers uh, who can unlock it for you. So with that, um, some of you may end up having um, some permissions to go in and edit the roster for your station. If that's the case, then you'll note under resources is daily roster. Let's jump right into that real quick. So here's all the apparatus that are in the roster currently. If I want to add an apparatus, I can come here. I can select it. Um, this is alphabetical, so choose apparatus 8. And now I want to add my personnel. Do that over here. And I can put in a name. personnel and then when I'm done I want to hit the OK button and then I want to hit the save button and now I just added that to the roster um, and here it is. Now when I'm wanting to take it off, obviously I could hit remove from roster. Or if this is an apparatus with these personnel, if you want to just kind of save that, you can take it and say inactive. And then that's just going to, it's a 
kind of an easy way to take it off the roster without having to go back in and recreate everything, which is a pretty good way to do it. So that is, and then of course come back up and hit save. That is how you edit the roster. So on this or the incident uh, reports, if you have any questions, just email me, pman 2 ns at staffordcountyva.gov, and uh, I'll try to get them answered for you. At some point, we're going to take all these questions that we're getting and making an FAQ, which we will publish on the members section of the website. So uh, I'll be sending out an email once we do have that up. And once it is up, uh, I'll encourage you to uh, keep a, an eye on it as it changes. We also have an FAQ, not a lot on it, but it's in Dropbox on most MDTs. But uh, the web members section of the web page will probably be the better place to check. So with that, that's all we have. Thank you.